Hard as a rock. No matter how hard-headed one may be, there is always a soft spot somewhere. How did they make this? It has the toughness of Goss Harangfer, but it's as light as Nagarkuga scales. And that goes for the other closing too. The consistency and quality is me outstanding. The strangest thing is possibly that everybody has clothes with tailoring meowch better than what you can get from the best smissies. There's simply no way this area has enough meowsters to provide this much material, though. New materials! I like them so meowch. And even more in the forest. We should lend that long ho horn hunter a paw with the Rasalos. Perhaps she might want to rethink that, Smissy. This locale and the new world we were headed to are two completely different places. The villagers here don't go into the forest to hunt or craft weapons and armor with Meowster materials. There's so much stuff in this village that I've never seen before. And I have no clue where they came from or how they work. Though... Based on what Yato said, some of them seem to be observing the endemic life here. Like the members of the Elder Dragon Observation Team or the Ecological Research Center. But it's still so different in so many aspects. Different? Positively. We must figure out a way back as soon as possible. I still have a chance to be the prime ecological researcher of the new world. Isn't this a new world too? Smithy! Are you saying... This is simply yet another undiscovered new world? More importantly... One that no other commission has been to before? No hunters or researchers! None of those Outer Dragon Observation Team louts! A totally different... Brand new world that only we know of! If I can make... And Paul recordings of our observations and findings here. I'll be basking in the limelight as a star, star scholar when we get back. Those Wyverians buried in their books will be so stunned by my newfound knowledge. I'm pretty clever if I do say so myself. No, that's not it. I need to think this over carefully. We're not the sort to just follow the hunters, are they? And we've already helped them deal with the Rasslos once. Rasslos! Bang, bang! I won't prevent me from going if you really want to, Smithy. I'm just going to wait here and see. Whoa, look, guys. Are they really felines? How could they be felines when they're just tiny? And so fluffy, too. How cute. Hey, what are you doing? Whoa, it can speak, too? That's so adorable! Can you play with us, little feline? We can carry you and give you pretty clothes to wear. Or throw you in the air and catch you. Just like that. Preposterous, you sharp-eared cravens. I hail from the royal polyontology scriveners. And I'm not your plaything. Let's try giving it some head pats. Hey, get, get your paws off me. I'm warning you. Ah, oh, it's so comfortable no i can't smithy come back wait for me i've decided yes since they've made such a sincere request to use my purr found expertise to do with the rasalos as a former royal polyontology scrivener my professionalism would never allow me to refuse to lend a paw let us be off post haste Oh, so you're saying you came upon a monster the size of a house in the forest near a village and that it can fly and breeze fire in all directions and even has venomous claws. <laughs> the forest truly is a wonder. I understand that you may find that hard to believe, but we saw it with our own eyes. We even fought it. While I can't confirm that this will escalate into some new kind of crisis, I suggest we immediately notify all the villagers and start evacuating 
as per standard catastrophe measures. How unfortunate to come, for you to come all this way, only to run into such a troubling matter. I am car, called Ataru Taki, the head man of this little Roka village. The peace we enjoy here stems not from me alone, but is thanks to all our efforts. Please, have a taste of this tea. It's a local specialty of ours, and not only is it refreshing, it can, it can also help speed up recovery. Don't mind if I do. Aki, we don't have the luxury of time here. I'll take a sip later. Did you not understand what I said? Only by swiftly evacuating the villagers can we ensure their safety and handle the crisis without any worries. Ah, youth are always such in a rush. That's not a bad thing. As the saying goes, the early foul beast gets the worm. Please, have a seat, you two. We still have time to discuss this in more detail. Yato, why not hear him out first? I hope you will carefully consider our proposal and, if con conditions permit, fortify the village defenses to ensure everyone is safe during the evacuation. You mentioned this before. But from where did you come again? Ro something? Rhodes Island. Ah, yes. Rhodes Island. You must be operators, Yato and Noir Corn, yes? If memory serves me right. Let me try to recall why I contacted you people back then. Oh, yes. You claim to be able to treat uropathy. Recently, several families in Roka seem to have gotten infected. The Shimanaga, Watazawa, Seno, and Ishidori households. The last one in particular has an especially young child who's contracted uropathy. And it is heartbreaking to see. We are well versed in handling everything related to Urpathy, so you can leave that matter to us. Of course, and thank you very much for coming. But there remains another small issue nagging at me. What are you talking about? I just can't wrap my head around it. Why are you so concerned with the monsters in the forest? Are you not a pharmaceutical company? Uh, let me explain. Regional outbreaks of Urpathy often have an underlying cause, and the best way to effectively deal with it is to eliminate the source of originum dust. To be honest, we, we investigated the mountains earlier and found some clues linking the outbreak to that creature. Although we can't conclusively prove it yet, prevention is always better than cure. I see, I see. How meticulous. I'd expect no less of Rose Island. I do hope the village use can learn a thing or two from you. I must still insist that you heed our advice to ensure the safety of people in the village. Ah, uh, yes. I still have one more question for the both of you, though. Please, go ahead. How did you find the tea? Please don't try to change the subject. It's pretty good. Tasty and invigorating. Way better than the mass-produced bottled stuff you find in bars. Oh, yes. Those Mitsumoto Big Shots also like it very much. So you do business with the Mitsumotos? We use a very expensive herb called Suzuka to make this blend of tea. It grows near the Sobo Mountain Range and nowhere else. All the Suzuka tea produced in all of Higashi comes from this tiny region you find yourselves in. Besides that, we also specialize in handcrafted ironwork and ornamental woodcrafts, thanks to the high quality ores and variety of trees we have around here. What are you getting at? To put it bluntly, only a few years back, we were but a tiny hunting village, and our livelihood depended on how well the hunt went. We would sing and dance around the campfire when the woods were bountiful. There were also times when we could count the days our rations would last on one hand. Not to mention the ever-present worry of being attacked by beasts at night. But these last few years, we've been able to replace our thatched roofs with wood, light up our streets with, at night, and our children are able to enjoy hot baths every day. Now, 
Nobody has to go hunting in the mountains. Nor worry about tomorrow. So to leave our homes over such vague hunch you have, the villagers won't readily accept it. I have no intention of making this permanent. Once the situation has been taken care of, you should be able to return. And how many days would that take? One, two, maybe a month, a year? Can you ensure the village stays intact? That we will be able to return to the lives we have now? Can Rhodes Island guarantee that? As of right now, I'm afraid not. We can't predict the exact scale of the situation, but of course you can't. Which is why we won't leave. How is the villager's safety not your top priority? I can guarantee you that this thing exists. So how can we simply ignore the threat of such a large and dangerous creature? Are you absolutely sure? Of what? We have a saying here. When you see butterflies fluttering and fall, in truth, they are but falling leaves. We are all too familiar with this forest, Miss Yato. So her, perhaps what you think you saw was simply that. What are you? All right, Horn. We'll go do checkups on the villagers infected and then arrange a treatment plan based on our findings. Thank you both. Really? But now that you bring up treatment plans, I do have one more small favor to ask of you. We're listening. Could you possibly provide us with some Oripacy suppressing drugs right now? What for? The situation really worries me to no end. Even with the two of you here. So just in case a similar outbreak occurs again in the future. I would like us to at least have some medicine ready. Please, rest assured. I intend to pay in full for everything. There's no need for that. We just handle the source of the... Yato, will it be a bother? No, there's no problem. We can give you some right away. Oh yeah, head Mintaki. I still have a question. You said the village used to make a living through hunting. So are there any hunters still around? There's no need to hunt. Naturally, we have no hunters. Because I met someone earlier, when we just got here, who looked an awful lot like a hunter. I think his name... He said his name was Kashiwao. Do you know who that is? A hunter? <laughs> In truth, even I could call myself a hunter. He's pretty old, so he tends to run his mouth. He likes to go to the mountains and swing sticks at trees. But his eccentric personality might cause you some trouble in the future. So I think it would be best to stay away from him. He doesn't seem to have some any family around either. Did he get into some kind of trouble? You ask interesting questions. He's just a reclusive sort. Every village has one or two of them. It's nothing unusual. It's getting late. Someone not call it a day here. I wish you both a pleasant stay in our humble abode. Sorry to bother you. Oh, right. Just a friendly piece of advice. Seasoned hunters all know this. The more curious the forest beast the more easily it falls into a trap. Do keep that in mind. I can only blame myself for underestimating the village's reluctance to evacuate. It was unwise to try to get them to leave with only the suspicion of danger and no hard evidence. I think even if we brought evidence, you still wouldn't believe us that easily. He's been refusing to hear us out, and even wants us to stay away from the Rathalos. Did you stop me earlier because the way he was acting? Well, his reason for wanting the drugs was sort of unusual, and more than a little fishy, so I figured it'd be faster to just agree and then see what he does. As for his parting words, it's hard to see them as anything but a warning. I don't care, regardless of the attitude of the people here. We have only one duty. Protect them from any threat. Needless to say, I will find a solution. Hmm. As for you, you care too much. I just... 
I just thought Kashiwa was acting a little too oddly. I understand your concern, but it has nothing to do with our mission. Don't waste your energy on irrelevant things. Ice cold on an autumn night in the mountains. The wind blew through the still warm body. It had been bitten, torn apart, chewed on. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts so bad. Kill them! Ah! So... Just a dream. I saw you again in it. Mr. Kashiwa, are you there? Come in. Oh, wrong voice. My bad. It's the kid. I realized after I said it. I brought some onigiri and boiled some bamboo shorts. Oh, shoots. I just leave them on the table, okay? I also got some bento boxes from the city. So you can just warm them up and... Oh, are you headed out? Yes. I'm going up the mountain. Are, are you going to deal with that oversized flying monster those two operators were talking about? I'm just going on a regular hunt. Then, can I just say, I've been preparing for this day. And now that a super powerful monster has appeared, it's time I finally became a proper hunter. Look, I have a bow, leather hiking boots, and a knife. I'm healthy. I'm pretty strong. So, can I come hunting with you? No. What? Can you at least think it over? I can help you with a lot of things, like like carrying your hunting spear, uh, s setting up traps, carrying pouts down the mountain. You're too young for that, kid. With no experience, you'd only slow me down. I'm not a kid anymore. Back in the day, children my age would already be out hunting. There's no way you don't know that. I'll be good and stay out of trouble. That's enough from you. Everyone says, there's no more hunters in the village. <laughs> hunters defeat the beasts in the forest. And are the strongest heroes of the village. Like you. It's obvious that you've been protecting everyone the whole time. So why do they talk about you like that? They even say you're not a real hunter. Just a doddering old man who goes up the mountain to get his bones chewed on by beasts. They said... The forest becomes more dangerous by the day. It's no longer safe for anyone to set foot in. They... They were lying, right, Mr. Kashiwa? You're a real hunter. R right? I... I'll take care of that monster in return. Believe me. Alright. Enough crying. Though it may be too early for you now. I still believe that one day you'll be a real hunter. This is a promise between the two of us. Alright? Yeah. Promise. Huh? Why are the villagers coming out? Raise your hands? Yes, like that. Don't be afraid. I'm just taking a quick look. Alright. Good girl. Next, please. The old hunter lingered for a moment and was about to turn away. Then the, then the young operator happened to glance sideways and they met eyes for an instant. <laughs> Can I ask? How's my health? I've been getting a lot of headaches lately. Don't worry, it's nothing serious. Here are some painkillers. No need to take one daily. Just whenever you feel severe pain. Thank you. Yato, you should come check out the angiography results. Alright. 
Please wait a moment. I'll be back right away for the rest of the consultation. You see this? How could this be? All right. Sorry to have kept you waiting, but I have a question to ask. Actually, there have been some slight changes detected in your condition. Have you encountered anything unusual lately? Or visited any places you don't normally go? Ah, uh, is, is it serious? Not for now, but if you continue to be exposed to active originum and develop aripathy, dealing with the consequences won't be easy. It doesn't even have to be recently, but please try and recall if you've had any unusual encounters, especially with originum. Active originum? But how? They said I was properly protected when I went in. Went in? Where? Narumatsu, don't say things that will make the doctor misunderstand. I, I'm i just a blacksmith. How, how could I possibly have been exposed to originum? There must be some sort of mistake. Indeed. Our village is fairly disciplined, so there shouldn't be any cause for concern here, doctor. I understand. Please be careful to stay away from areas that might be contaminated with originum. Or active originum. And not to touch any suspicious objects in the future. So they're mining something. That's why they want the pills. That was the last one. Find out anything new? They've all been saying the same thing. Is that they've never left. They never leave the village or nothing at all. Using the possibility of contracting oripathy as a scare tactic hasn't been effective. The moment you ask about anything other than their condition, or ask where they've been, they immediately put up their guard. Although only a few individuals were diagnosed with acute uropathy and were instructed on how to properly deal with it, we cannot underestimate the extent to which uropathy has affected the village as a whole. The results you showed me earlier, were the rest of them similar? Yep. They haven't been in contact with Originum recently. Then where did the outbreak come from? According to the angiogram results, the villagers have been exposed to active Originum for at least a few years. Only in trace amounts, though, resulting in vague symptoms, and only a few that have actually contracted aeropathy. It's due to limited exposure to an extremely low concentration of Originum particles, I think. Was it at the same level we detected in the Rathlow scratch marks? No. That was high enough to induce aeropathy outright. And it's probably related to the few villagers who did contract the disease. He also mentioned they went into the forest. Freezes deeply. Let's see. If this area has been under continuous exposure to originum, and then one day it suddenly spiked, could it be that... Both sources of originum come from the same place? Very likely. Hello there. You're from earlier. Excuse me. I should have introduced myself. I am called Hishi Hiroshi Rito. My family has lived here for many generations. Hello. Do you need something from us? I hope the two of you can forgive me for interrupting your inquiry earlier. I was simply worried that he had misspoken in public, which could have consequences. Consequences? What do you mean? Ah, uh, because of a certain matter in this village. Many people have dirty laundry they'd rather not air. Y you two. Are you, are you the visiting doctors? Um, we can only examine for apathy. What's got you in such a hurry? Ah, oh, could it be? Please, you have to save the Ishidori's boy. I'm his neighbor and he's really sick. He keeps, he keeps on vomiting blood. Vomiting blood? That sounds serious. We better get going. I'll come with you. Why? Are you, are you trying to get infected? What, what, whatever. Pass the drainage tube. Pliers, quickly. Gauze. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> We've succeeded. Luckily. We've dealt with a similar situation before. Yeah, I remember that. Back then, you were doing it yourself. Or doing it to yourself. I take it your idle chatter means you need to do more. Go give him a suppressant shot. Doctor? Will he be okay? He's out of danger. There was bleeding in his lungs and... Being in the wrong posture caused the blood clot to clog his airways. Make sure he sits up properly and gets ample rest. Thank goodness. It's too early to breathe easy. Things aren't looking very well for him. His infection has been the most severe we've seen so far here. Though, fortunately, he's got a suppressant shot just in time. That will only slow the symptoms and will have to be followed up with more shots. He might even need to be brought back to Rhodes Island. But to be in this condition, what exactly did he come in contact with? I don't know. This shouldn't have been anything. Doesn't make sense. What about his family? I don't know either. What exactly are you all hiding? Papa. Papa would never lie. Monster. Giant monster. A monster? You can't say that. Ah, miss. Please don't get any closer. Corn, keep her in check. My throat. Water. Here you go. Careful. Drink it slowly. I'm here to help. So don't be afraid. Where's your family? Papa. He... Got taken away by the village headman soon after he came back from the cave. What cave? Child, you mustn't speak of that to outsiders. This only concerns. Shut up! Can it be any more important than a child's life? <laughs> Papa, he would go into the cave every morning and come back late at night. But yesterday. There was a loud noise from the cave. The village headman said he needed people to take a look. So Papa went in and got a fever when he came back and had rocks growing on him. Oripathy wor worsens rapidly. Sounds like he might have come into direct contact with some active originum and gotten some, on, some of it on his body, causing the boy's condition to deteriorate too. Papa said, there are big monsters in the cave. And it's not safe, but the village headman said he was lying. So nobody believed him. And he got taken away. He would never lie. Never. There, there. He wasn't lying. We saw a monster with our own eyes. Really? Yes. Don't worry. We're very strong. And won't let the monster harm the village. Can you defeat it, lady? And protect the village? Papa didn't lie. Hmm. I give you my word. As captain of Rhodes Island Op Team A4, I, Operator Yato, accept your commission. And I never break my promises. Thank you. Now that's enough talking. You need to get some more rest, okay? Step aside, Corn. Q. You should have seen that kid's condition earlier, right? Many of the villagers have been infected. And if the source of the Originum dust isn't taken care of, you will all contract the repathy. And things will only get worse from there. The next person to end up like this will be you. Am I clear? So tell me what exactly it is you are all hiding. Sorry. I, I can't. Let her go. She had no choice. Perhaps it's better that I explain. Please leave. I'll talk to them. Thank you. Finally talking? The cave the boy mentioned. It's in the mountain. Behind the village. Many workers work down there under a vi village headman. What's inside? 
I don't work there, so I don't know. And even if I did know, I wouldn't be able to talk about it. Just like she couldn't. So the village headman is the one making sure everyone keeps their mouth shut. Well, I didn't say that. Please take care of the child. In the meantime, I'll go clarify matters with the headman. Wait. Are you sure about that? If the situation isn't resolved, the village will only be in more danger. Do you really think he'll tell you the truth? You only get ambiguous answers. And end up even further from a solution. He's right, Yato. I... I know where it is. This is the place he mentioned. And I already scouted out the area. There aren't many houses on this side of the village. The terrain is pretty whack. So that doesn't seem suspicious at first glance. Over there. There are two villagers chatting like they're just taking a break out behind the mountain. But it's obvious that they keep glancing at that one house over there. I'll take him down. And you go take a look inside. Wait. What if we mess this up? Knock out two innocent villagers? And they'll definitely kick us out of the village. Yeah. Smissy here has an idea from you. For, whoa. Where did you guys come from? Yeah. We've decided to come help you too with the Rastlos. So you should be on your hind paws thanking us for the assistance. So you think you can lure them away? I don't think anything. Smissy's the one with the idea. Yato. Let's leave it to them. And the both of us can sneak in from the back. Smissy, is this idea of yours really going to work? Where did all these ingredients come from? Chop! Sir! No stopping meow! Ah, uh, how appalling. I, from a royal paleontology scrivener, Destined to be the most amazing researcher of the new world. I'm not some ordinary canteen chef. Turn it over. It's done. Well done. Is it time for dinner yet? What are you talking about? The sun hasn't even set yet. I didn't have breakfast or lunch today. Not even a snack. But ever since those two outsiders arrived, it's... Headman stationed me here to keep an eye out. So I haven't had a chance to get a bite. I'm so hungry. Can you keep a lid on it? You're not the only one who's hungry here. Hey. Do you think those two will really come looking? Haven't they been busy treating the villagers? Just follow the headman's orders and stay put. Do what you want. Do you want what happened with that girl to happen again? She turned the village upside down back then. Fine, fine. I'll hold it in. Wait. What's that smell? Smell? What smell? Ah. Quickly roasted meat. Melted grease bubbling over the vegetables. And the sweet scent of roasted fruit. I've never smelled anything like it before. Salivating. Stop talking, I can smell it too, you know. Come on, let's take a look. Maybe someone's brought us food. You go. I'll wait here. Are you sure? Didn't you say you were hungry too? Just a quick look. Wow! A nutritious and energizing meal, paw made by felines. Perfect for dinner. A table for two, perhaps? You're... Ah, they're... Smithy, we have custom meows. Bruh, they just knocked them the fuck out. <laughs> Smithy is fucking whack and I love him. Okay, I, I'm standing still, right here. Be gentler when you step on me. Ow! Is this the cave the kid was talking about? Doesn't seem natural. There are signs of excavation work all along the walls. They even laid, laid tracks on the ground. These prints look pretty fresh too. 
said he must have used it recently. The entrance to the cave was sealed when we came in. And it didn't look like they uh, it didn't look like they closed it for us, but to keep something in. Given what the Ishidori kid said, there was probably an accident here recently. Do you think the tracks might lead us closer to the Rasalos? We'll know once we go deeper in. What's that up ahead? Wait, don't move. I'll go take a look, see. Slow down, you. Be careful. No problemo. It doesn't seem to be alive. Burnt clothing. Looks like it was taking off before it caught fire. A fire. There's more over there. Helmet and a portable flashlight. Maybe that kid's dad left it here. There's a ventilation shaft up ahead. He probably left his things here and tried to escape through the shaft but failed. So he was running away. I'm probably really nervous. The hole is big enough to house a Rathalos, so most likely. Corn, go test the burnt clothes. I've got the results. There's traces of our active originum. In similar concentration to the sample we got from the scratch marks in the forest. But slightly higher. You smell anything strange, Yato? Blood. From up ahead. I'll go take a look, see. This is... A piece of meat? Huge ch chunks of meat beast. And fresh, too. Probably left here shortly before we came in. Seems like they dragged it down here. But why? Maybe to attract some kind of carnivore? Ah. Attract. The Rathalos? <coughs> ah. <coughs> Stupid longhorn hunter. What are Muse shouting for? Because you guys just jumped out without any warning. That particular smell again. We perfectly distracted those guards. And there was so much left over. <coughs> We knocked them out cold. So it ended up like the original plan anyway. Wait. Leftover what? Don't you mind it. Just keep going. We'll be here for a bit. There's a lot of investigating to do. They're going to catch up with Mew. Huh? What's going to catch up? People. Why would there be people down here? Is it not perfectly normal for people to try and catch Mew? If you sneak into their place, even if Snip Smissy didn't pilfer their kitchens, me would have been discovered eventually. What on terror is going on here? Everyone, shut up. Listen. The sound is approaching. They're going to catch up with us. No. That sound is coming from within the cave. Infected creatures. And that was just a pre-story. Holy lore. I I really do think they could cut some of the text down. <laughs> oh, man. Incoming. Three o'clock. Yeah. Watch out. Above you. That was close. There's too many of them. Where are the infected creatures down here? All these years and you still haven't broken the habit of asking pointless questions. None of these pests should be allowed to go any further. I can't imagine what would happen to the village if they broke free. There's more coming. On your right. My blade. Curses, it's becoming even more dull from the sheer numbers we're dealing with. We have to stop them from coming. If I'm not wrong. There are still some pretty powerful original bombs in my bag from our last mission. They can be remotely detonated. Just gotta think of a way to trigger one without blowing us up too. The ventilation shaft. It opens up into the inner walls of the cave. So we can use a bomb to blow open the covering and give us an escape route. After we're out, we can then quickly detonate the bombs below and cause a cave-in to trap them in. It's definitely feasible. 
but the explosion will also weaken the cave structure. So we'll have limited time to escape. We'll have to be fast. I go plant the explosives, but I'll need someone to block the infected creatures. Can you handle that? Why even ask? I want them off. Go set them up. Be careful. Hey, I'm right here. Don't even think about of looking anywhere else. Quickly now. All right. Setup complete. Hop on ready for detonation. It opened up. Damage was in expectations. You head up first. I'll keep them at bay to here. No, too dangerous. You'll probably end up getting buried alive. Just listen to me for once, or one of them might slip past. Fine. Then you follow my instructions. I'm up, corn. Evacuate immediately. I'm coming. Up. Oh. Ah. What's the matter? The ladder broke. What? How? Tisha. Calm down, Yato. I'm fine. Stay calm. Stay calm. Let me think. Right. I have an idea. Position your shield between yourself and the bomb. Then detonate it and use the force of the shockwave to launch yourself up. I... I don't think that's safe. I'll definitely catch you. Got it. Get ready. Jump. Man, he has a lot of faith in that shield. Alright. I've got you. Get... Up here. My body. I'm fine. That was perfect. Horn. You should think about going on a diet. Oh, re really? You're going to tell... <laughs> Guess I'll ask Hibiscus for ideas when we get back. So, are we in the forest? Smithy, over here. The two longhorn people managed to escape. You escaped! Like you guys always just pop up out of nowhere. Those chunks of meats were deliberately paced to lure something up. Out from the cave. And we were almost certainly the targets. But we managed to escape. So their plan should have failed. Could it have been the villager who gave us the cave's location? It doesn't matter who did it. We managed to at least knock the, uh, block the cave entrance for now. So it's going to be difficult for the headman to make any further moves against us. And I doubt he intends to destroy his own village. If the source of the Ripathy and the Rathlos are both connected to the cave, then the most direct solution would be to find out where the cave goes. Based on this trajectory, it probably ends up somewhere within this mountain range. The exact location will be hard to determine. What if we look for the Rathlos instead? The cave's condition implies it's been in there before, at the very least. And it might even be the end point you're talking about. Yes, that's very likely. Considering that returning to the village will only put us in a sticky situation, there's only one path left for us. We head deeper into the forest to find the Rasselos. Wait just a meowment. We just went through a thrilling crisis and are about to embark on an exciting journey chasing a Rasselos. A feline's life truly never pauses. So first, we have to fill our... Fill up our stomachs. Come enjoy the uniqueness of feline cuisine. Ain't these just leftovers? You know nothing. The taste has changed not one bit. Fine. I'm craving some meat, so give me a piece. Me too. Ecological research team. Onward. New materials. Forward. The Rathlos. We'll have to wait. Oh, it's still going. Doesn't end. <laughs> Rito, give me one good reason why you led them to the cave. It's simple. Then they tell you they were going to deal with that monster. I simply created the perfect conditions for them. Do you understand what would happen if outsiders found out about our secret? Of course, of course. Even your niece who only comes back once in a blue moon. Made such a ruckus when she found out. If a company familiar with Originum like Rhodes Island found out, the consequences would be unthinkable. 
So you're ready to handle said consequences? They will die down there. Think about it carefully, Hedman. Where are those former hunters? I've laid out the bait, and as we know, be some were tempted by the scent of blood. They will encounter that monster be long before they discover our secret, and bam, battle begins. They're weak. The monster will take care of them for us, and we won't have to worry about any consequences. And if by some chance they can take care of the monster, then wouldn't that also be a win for us? But successfully eliminated. If I had some, I had some people wait for them to enter, then follow after a short while. Surely they'll be weak and injured after fighting the monster. So if we want to dispose of them, that would be our best opportunity. No matter how it ends up, we benefit. You have clearly put a lot of thought into this. And of course, whichever way it goes, it'll be better than you sealing the cave off and stubbornly concealing everything. Hmm. Uh, don't look so serious. I knew you might be concerned about it. So I just helped you out a little, that's all. After all, Akira is no longer with us. So I'm your right hand man. Hedman, it's a disaster. Someone blew up the, up the cave at the back of the village. The entrance has been blocked off by rubble. I understand. Bring some men with you to clear up the debris and reopen the cave. You can go now. Rito, was this also part of your brilliant plan? Oh, this was indeed outside of my calculations. But since the cave was blown up, I can't imagine they survived the aftermath. They probably died along with the monster. No matter what you've done today. I will weigh the pros and cons for the village and decide whether to hold you accountable for your actions later. However, for now, I'll send a search party to make sure they stay silent. Works out nightly, nicely then, doesn't it? Well, I'll be holding back. I'll be heading back. But, wow, my words are shutting down right now. There are still quite a few bills I need to go through. See yourself out. <sighs> Akira, you were right. The leaves are falling. So autumn is already here. Let's go, Akira. Is that the headman's daughter, Akira? But this old guy seems to know her also. Are they related? Hmm. We'll see. 